Number 75. Explain why the HOH molecule is bent, whereas the HBEH molecule is linear. All right, so first things first, I see the words bent and linear, and in chemistry, that is part of knowing your molecular geometries. Molecular geometries. I'm just going to put G. Okay, so... How do we understand what a structure or what structure has what molecular geometry? It all comes from first knowing your Lewis structure. I know you got, we can't get away from these, right? Lewis structures are super important. So only from drawing the correct Lewis structure will you then be able to find your molecular geometry of the compound. So I see that they said... We have HOH, right? That's another way of saying H2O. So we're just talking about water as opposed to this compound, which would be BEH2, but it, does, it doesn't really matter. But they're telling you which one should be the central, right? From left to right, it looks like ox uh, yeah, oxygen is in the middle between two hydrogens in this case, and beryllium, BE, is in the middle between the two hydrogens here. So... I'm assuming that this compound is covalent because they're telling us that it's a molecule, right? And remember, only covalent compounds can be molecules, not ionic. So that's another reason why we have to draw the Lewis structures. You can only draw Lewis structures for covalent compounds. Now, we have done Lewis structures, tons of them. So if you guys are not comfortable with knowing how to draw Lewis structures, go back to question 40 in this chapter. There's tons of questions starting from there. I'm just going to give you the Lewis structures here, and you could kind of like match them up to see if you got them correctly. So for H2O or HOH, your Lewis structure should look like this. You should have one oxygen in the middle surrounded by the two hydrogens, and the oxygen should have two lone pairs as opposed to the H2BE, or if you want to put BEH2, it would be just beryllium in the middle, surrounded by two hydrogens, and in this case, there is no lone pairs. So the difference has to come from the lone pairs. Now, the first thing is we drew the Lewis structure. Now we go to molecular geometry. That's knowing how to use this chart right here. I would first memorize this chart, all right? And the way that you memorize it is you want to try to group the ones that go together, and they go horizontally. So trigonal planar and bent or angular, nobody really calls it angular, they call it bent, goes together. Tetrahedral, trigonal pyramid, or trigonal pyramidal and bent go together. Trigonal bipyramidal, seahorse or seesaw, T-shaped linear goes together. So all of these go together. All right. Now, how do we get a molecular geometry? It always comes from the central atom, nowhere else. So in this case, I have oxygen versus beryllium. And the thing that you want to say is you first want to say how many things are around your central atom. I'm just going to say CA. Now, a thing could be classified as a bond or a lone pair, so two dots. Those are your two things that will be classified as a thing. So for oxygen, it has one thing, it has one lone pair, it has another thing, that's another lone pair, and then two single bonds. So in this case, this has four things. Now, I just say things because it's easier, right? But this is corresponding to the number of electron pairs. So if you want to think of total things being electron pairs, that's perfect. So now, uh, water would have a geometry shape, a molecular geometry of in the four range. So it could be one of these three. But now you just have to figure out which one. And it comes from knowing the lone pairs. Does your central atom have zero lone pairs or one lone pair or two lone pairs? Lone pairs means a group of dots, right? Two dots. In this case, it has two lone pairs. It has one up top and one on the bottom. So four total things, but two lone pairs. And that's how we get this over here. And that's why H2O is classified as 
bent. Beryllium, on the other hand, how many total things does this central atom have? Beryllium has only, I'll put it in a different color, it only has two single bonds, one and two. It doesn't have any lone pairs. So total, it would have two things. Two things, zero lone pairs, and that's what we're looking for here. There's only one representation of something that has two total things, which is linear, and that's why. So this would be linear. And what do they mean by that? They always represent the bond angle from angle to angle. So this would be 180 degrees from one angle or one bond to the other bond, as opposed to these two, even though they look linear because I drew it in a straight line, in reality, they are less than 109. I think they're like 104 degrees, 104, 105 degrees. So I'll just say roughly around 105. So when you draw water, technically it should look like this. You will see the little kink in there. And from bond to bond, from here to here, that's roughly around 104, 105 degrees. So that's why H2O is bent, and that's why uh, BEH2 is linear, because it all comes down to the molecular geometry. And that's the end for this one. This one was pretty cool, just going over molecular geometry and how to use the chart, but I'm sure that there's going to be more questions coming our way, and I got you covered. All right, so... Thanks for tuning in. If you want to help this, the channel out, click the subscribe button. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, we'll be here for you guys. Thank you so much. I will see you guys on the next question. Bye-bye.